Hello, this is Dr. Mikolai Rashek of Mirror Genomics, the company that brings you medical DNA testing. But this is once again a video on the, on the latest science related to mRNA vaccines. And I'm particularly excited about this video because today, and I've been waiting for this for a while, I'll be talking about, talking about genetics as it relates to as it relates to uh, the vaccination and more specifically use of DNA or RNA sequencing technology. So I have three papers I wanted to quickly tell you about that I found very interesting that all came out in, in recent time and let's go, uh, let's go one by one. So the first paper I want to tell you about is how the authors of this paper, of this paper looked for what the actual immune response is as a consequence of the vaccination. So it's kind of funny, you know, this is six months into the vaccination program and we're actually learn, still learning these particular details. That's how uncharacterized these vaccines were originally when, when we first approved them uh, for, for its use. So what these particular authors did, this is really ingenious, they wanted to see how our memory t-cell response to vaccination and let me give you a brief background so what happens is when you get infected with a pathogen there are cells inside your body that will basically devour that pathogen eat it up basically and once it's the pathogen is eaten by a cell it chews it up inside and it will present fragments of that pathogen pathogen in this case the SARS-CoV-2 virus on its cell surface and the way it presents it on the cell surface is by using what, uh, specific receptors uh, in mammals these receptors are called major histocompatibility complex in humans they can also be called human um, human leukocyte antigen system and by the way this is the the genes responsible for those receptors is the most diverse genes uh, in our genome and that makes sense because they have to be super diverse in order to be able to present huge variety of different pathogenic fragments so when these fragments and by the way these fragments that are presented on a cell surface using these receptors they are called epitopes i'll be using that word frequently and these epitopes are then subsequently recognized by T-cells by using their own receptors called T-cell receptors. And that's how T-cells are activated into a response and that's partially how you activate the immune response. So what these authors did is they took the blood samples from surviving COVID-19 patients and they actually sequenced and analyzed what were the, what were the human leukocyte antigen sequences present in those individuals to determine what kind of epitopes would be presented on a cell surface. And using that information, they selected a uh, certain number of, of potential suspected epitopes that would be presented. And then they used that, those epitopes as, uh, to basically capture T cells in in uh, vaccinated people or people who've been naturally infected versus people who have been naturally infected and vaccinated and they they characterize those t cells specifically by sequencing all of the rna inside those cells as well as the dna uh, within those cells to determine what the t cell receptors were like and this way they were able to show using all of that different information they were able to show that basically if you get vaccinated the memory response within t cells that you induce is pretty much indistinguishable from what you would expect from natural infection so whether you get naturally infected or whether you get vaccinated that response looks pretty much identical so the epitopes uh, they're basically your immune t cell immune reaction is responding to the, to the same uh, epitopes. So it's pretty much the same. What about if you were first sick, so you got COVID-19 and then you took the vaccination? So in such individuals, it recalled the previously induced memory by a natural infection, 
and on top of that it boosted it further and helped to differentiate it and establish it even better so that's the outcome of uh, vaccinating a person who was previously infected and um, so both of these seem great uh, they were the authors were praising the vaccines but here's an interesting comment there's two additional interesting comments they mentioned that i found very interesting number one there they actually discussed the possibility of using revaccination with a booster booster shots so there is a discussion of possibility that booster shots might be needed and they specifically refer to it in case of immune escape event happens so what does that mean this is actually one of the major worries about the use of these vaccines is that eventually the virus SARS-CoV-2 virus could mutate itself to a point that the vaccines will no longer be able to recognize it and uh, and and therefore the virus can be infecting um, vaccinated people so that's the immune escape so they actually discuss it this is this is discussed in science in general it's not might, might not be discussed in the media but it's definitely discussed in the science and they were mentioning that in, in the event that booster shots would be needed for that particular purpose what they would expect is that the revaccination with an with a third shot what it would, it would do is that it should reactivate the induced memory response that was already created with the previous vaccination and it should not be altered they don't expect it to be altered in any substantial manner from what was already built previously as a consequence of the f of the first round of vaccinations but i actually not sure if that's a good thing in a way because and keep in mind i'm not an expert in, in immunology but i'm not sure if that would be a good thing because if there is no alteration in in the response in and including the memory then if you're inducing a response that was previously to a different variant will that actually help combat the uh, future emerging variants and i just don't know what the answer to that question would be but it's i'm just wondering if this would be helpful or not but here is an example of a scientific paper that actually discusses the potential threat of immune escape Another comment they, that I found interesting that they also mentioned is the fact that amongst the epitopes that they chose to study to, to see what these T-cell responses are, are epitopes that are also found as a consequence of some of the common cold coronavirus infections. So well, that actually information supports the previously made hypothesis that common colds so in fact being infected with a common cold might help you to some degree from uh, being protected from the SARS-CoV-2 and because of the same epitopes are being uh, are being used and that specifically is referred to as epitope cross reactivity so that's the first paper the second paper I wanted to discuss is the fact that um, the authors of that paper analyzed breast milk to see whether there could be a presence of the mRNA vaccine in it. And the reason why is because there has been uh, basically large concern amongst amongst um, pregnant women or basically breastfeeding women, whether it's safe for them to, to breastfeed. And many women actually either stop breastfeeding permanently or temporarily as a consequence of uh, taking a vaccine because they were worried about passing on the vaccine to, to their baby. And uh, these are, while this was not supported scientifically, but um, however, in the original clinical trials uh, for, for emergency approval of these vaccines, pregnant women and lactating women were not involved in those trials. So these authors decided to, to, to study that. They, I, they took milk basically from um, approximately, if I remember correctly, seven breastfeeding women, and they analyzed all of the RNA in these women and basically they found no presence of the mRNA vaccine in any component of the breast milk so the the current recommendation confirms what is the current recommendation from health authorities which is basically if you're a breastfeeding woman and you take the vaccine you should not stop breastfeeding you should continue breastfeeding so at least that's that's the outcome of that publication and the final publication i wanted to tell you about is quite interesting in that it discusses discussed or analyzed the possibility whether sars-cov-2 virus could be incorporating itself into our genome 
basically back into your DNA. And the reason why they analyzed that is because not that long, long ago, a few months ago, there was a paper that got published and um, it was peer-reviewed that proposed that possibility that SARS-CoV-2 could in fact possibly incorporate itself into a genome. However, the, the, I never wanted to discuss this before because first of all, it didn't really relate to mRNA vaccines and second of all, it was controversial at the time. It was based on weak evidence that was unconfirmed. But now since we have a second paper talking about it, I thought maybe I'll mention it. So. How does that happen? Well, believe it or not, some viruses actually can incorporate themselves right into your DNA, right into your genome. So HIV is a perfect example. Another one is hepatitis B virus. And the way they do that is because within, within the virus genetic information, they code for a protein that is called a reverse transcriptase. Think of a protein as a molecular robot that does certain functions within the cell. And re what, does, what reverse transcriptase actually does is that it takes the RNA and converts it back into DNA. So recall that the dogma is that DNA itself is just a repository of information. You need to copy a fragment of the DNA into an entity, what is called RNA, and RNA itself is actually the blueprint that you use to produce a protein or a robot that will do a specific function in, inside your cell. So it's a one, one way direction process. However, you could reverse the RNA back into DNA with a protein called reverse transcriptase. However, SARS-CoV-2 does not code for reverse transcriptase, so you do not expect SARS-CoV-2 to be incorporating itself into our genomes. Now, however, on top of that, we also have elements within our genome, genes that are called line one, and these genes are also called selfish genes because what they code for is actually, a, a partially they code for reverse transcriptase. So this particular gene, once it's transcribed into RNA, then that RNA itself is used to produce the protein. That protein, the reverse transcriptase, will take the RNA of, of, of its own gene and convert it back into DNA. And then another fragment of that same protein will insert it right back into our genome. So then basically the genes can jump around in a way. And um, typically they just do it for, for, for their own RNA, but sometimes by accident, they can accidentally incorporate other other RNAs, including R mRNAs from uh, that are, that come from genes. So, of course, that was one of the big threats in relation to to um, vaccines, whether this could be possible or not. But it's basically, while in theory it could be possible, mechanistically it's next to impossible because of how many unusual circumstances would have to happen. But here's the here's. Uh, paper that was published that potentially maybe this is what exactly what happens with the SARS-CoV-2 virus and while that paper made a lot of controversy the second paper that I wanted to tell you about right now what they did is they use a technology called Oxford Nanoport uh, long read technology by long read it means it actually can decode very long fragments of DNA and they studied the same cell, line, cell lines as the original paper and they were able to show that there was no such thing as incorporation of the SARS-CoV-2 into the genome of those, particular, of those particular cells. So for now, the verdict is that it does not seem plausible that SARS-CoV-2 or mRNA could really be incorporated back into the genome using using this particular system now there always is a super tiny remote possibility but according to those authors it would be extremely unlikely so these are the these are the papers that i wanted to discuss with you in this particular video if you like this information give us a like subscribe to the channel and we shall see you at another installment discussing mrna vaccine science thank you very much and see you soon bye for now